Okay, hi, I'm Nate. Um, in the program, it suggests that, that Vern is talking in this session too, which he's not. That was a mix up on my part. He was at the, uh, the sprint that I'm going to be talking about, though. Um, but you just heard him talk, so years from now, it'll all blur together. You won't know. Um, although he is from Southern California, I don't know why he was putting on a fake British accent for his whole session. Like that. Um, anyway, the, the title for my talk is how he wrote a font forge manual in three days, which uh, after I saw it, I realized I don't really like that title because I'm gonna talk about a book sprint that uh, some font forge volunteers went to and came up with an actual printed book. But the how is not really the interesting part. I mean, it involves some software, um, but really what is probably more interesting to everyone else is the lessons that I think we learned from that about documentation and maybe some about font forge itself. And um, there, there may be applications to that for other projects. I would definitely encourage other projects to look at doing a book sprint and participating in one. Um, and I'm going to talk about things that you can learn from that that, are, that stem from it being a book as opposed to uh, a web documentation project. And also the fact that it's a sprint um, affects things too. Uh, when I want to say we in this, this project that involved um, Vernon, who was just up here, Ben Martin, whom you have seen many times at this podium already, Evan Sorkin, who is a designer, Jason Pegura, who's a designer, and myself. And um, when we got to the book sprint, we were also joined by Molly Sharp, who did not come with us, but who works for Safari Books Online and happened to be there and was a good fit for what we were doing because she works in publishing and is an editor. Um, on this list, um, Vernon and Eben are both like trained professional type designers. Uh, Jason is, I guess you would say a part-time type designer, but he has also been doing it for a long time and he knows the FontForge tools really well, including quite a few that I don't know at all. Uh, ben is one of those few people who has actually looked into the abyss of the source code of FontForge and come out the other side. So he brought a technical angle to that. I'm sort of an amateur font designer, but I am also a, uh, a tech journalist, and I've been writing several thousand words a week about free software for years and years. So that comes in handy when you're writing a book to have some people who do that, uh, that writing stuff. And I would also add that in that group, I may have suggested that Vernon and Evan were sort of the same. They're both trained designers, but they have very different perspectives and having a group with different perspective helps a lot. And so um, Vernon, if you, if you look on the FontForge users list, he answers questions from other people constantly and is very active on, on the bug tracker and stuff. Evan is not as uh, experienced with FontForge, I guess, in particular, but he also, he's sort of a theorist and every topic they come up here like, well, we don't want to talk about bold, we want to talk about weight in general. And um, so it was interesting. The two of them have also have also lectured a lot um, about about type design. So the the notion that we would be able to instruct people on how to do it sort of comes from four or five different angles in just those five or six people. Um, but the other thing is that all of us were just sort of volunteers. Um, the project Google hosts it's called Summer of Code Doc Camp. And they sort of put out a call for any project who would like to come and spend a week um, writing a book. And uh, we sort of got who was available. And that doesn't mean that it was the B list or anything, but if it had been at a different time of year, it would have been different people who had been free. And if it had been at a different place, it might have been different people. Um, so you get a, a, uh, almost an arbitrary mix of different viewpoints, which is an interesting way to write. Now, the, the thing is called Summer of Code Doc Camp. It does not take place in summer. It's not actually a camp. You're at a hotel and at the Google offices. Unfortunately, I don't have pictures of that. The, the very friendly security guards at Google uh, and their brightly colored clothing are insistent that you don't take pictures of this stuff. And it was really nice, but there's people just right across the hall working on secret, secret projects and cyborgs and stuff. Um, the way the camp works, it's one week long, five days, and there were three projects there. FontForge was just one of the three. Um, the Google Summer of Code office 
sort of hosted it, but it was really facilitated and, and run by Floss Manuals, which is a project you may have heard of. Floss Manuals has been around for years, and they do a lot of documentation projects. They have a site, flossmanuals.net, where anyone can go and start a book. Um, it can be a manual in the strictest sense of the term is how to use it, and it can be your personal experience on things you can do with, with GIMP that are cool. So there's a lot of variety in that. And Floss Manuals has done some uh, some sprint events where they'll go and update the documentation for OpenStack or something to fit the new release. But this uh, book sprint thing is kind of a new, uh, or a rel relatively recent um, addition where you do an intensive workshop for one week with a team that gathers in one place and doesn't leave until it's done. Um, let's see, yeah, I just talked about that actually. Um, so yeah, Floss Manuals is concerned with with free software, but it's not exclusive to that. I'll get to the software that they actually use, and it can be used for writing any kind of book. It's not really specific to, to open source stuff. Um, the three projects that were at the camp when we were there were FontForge, Evergreen, which is an integrated library system, and by that I mean it's the software that runs the catalog and knows when stuff is checked out and knows when they need to acquire new stuff and manages accounts, and uh, really, really not related to font design at all. And then eToys, and eToys, which I think I didn't capitalize correctly, is a uh, programming environment for kids based on the squeak language. And so this is three arbitrary projects that have no relation to each other, but uh, the way the, the camp works, we were there for the same five days, and initially we had an unconference day where we split up into groups and wrote on sticky notes and stuck up to the wall and stuff like that. And then we split into our, our three projects and, and wrote intensively for three days and produced a book. Um, initially, we were, we were told, okay, the idea of the unconference, you're gonna sit down, you're gonna talk about what's important to your project and documentation, what are the struggles that you have, that kind of thing. And they told us, okay, the idea there is that you get thinking about documentation issues, but I think that was a lie. I think it was just to, to freak you out and fill you with fear because you realize that everyone faces the same problems in documentation and open source, like the keeping it up to date and getting developers and writers to speak the same language and, uh, and those things. So we dealt with some of that and then we split off and started writing. At the end of those five days, we had physical books. I held this up. This is the FontForge book. There is a print on demand shop somewhere near Mountain View that produced 30 copies of each of the three books uh, overnight. Um, they knew they were gonna do it, so it's not like we walked in with them, but uh, that is pretty amazing to see. And as you can see in that, that small screenshot, which I thought was bigger, uh, the software that you use for this process also produces electronic copies. There's an iPad there and an e-ink device of some kind and a little phone. Um, so what you end up with is not specific to being in print, but uh, that does help. Uh, the way the sprint actually works is the first day you get in your group and you decide on the title for your book. And there's a lot more to writing a title than you think because that determines the subject matter and the scope in a real particular way. Uh, then you split up, you decide what the table of contents is gonna be as a group and rearrange the chapters so that it makes sense. And then you split up and everybody writes a chapter separately and you look at someone else's chapters but they're all done simultaneously. That's not how you normally write, you normally write you know, in order, if you're writing a novel, you would do it that way, probably. Uh, and then there's a review process where everyone checks everyone else's stuff, but at some point it's just done. Um, the software that you use for this is called BookType. These days it's, it's managed by Source Fabric, which is a group that produces journalism software. It was originally called Bookie, and I think it was when Floss Manuals wrote it, it was called Bookie, and they just sort of gave it to uh, uh, Source Fabric to do more interesting things with. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's a basic um, WYSIWYG looking web editor, but it does let you in the book view sort of shuffle and rearrange chapters and it locks out a chapter when you're reading it. So it does stuff behind the scenes or when you're editing it, sorry. And you can leave notes and stuff. So it's, it's good at the collaborative writing process even though it sort of just looks like a text entry field. And like I said, it can produce HTML um, which is natural, and it can produce a PDF that you can print, but it can do lots of other things. There's uh, an engine called Objavi, Ob I'm not sure how it's pronounced, 
that is actually based on the Caliber e-reader um, uh, e-reader software, and that does all the conversion stuff. But um, yeah, I am running short on time apparently. So what do I want to say? Um, well, the title determines everything. Is the first thing that we learned. When you look at this, this is nine words, but it it restricts a lot of what we say because it's a guide to making type, right? It's not a reference manual. It's start designing with FontForge. So it's not for people who have years and years of design experience with FontLab or some other application. And just settling on that name um, crystallizes what you're going to write and what you're not going to write in a really specific way. Um, I actually already talked about that. Um, the sprint format leaves things like worrying about style issues um, for the very end. And you focus on the content, and you get the content done. Um, there's some pictures of the books. Hopefully, the book will live on. We set up a, a website, designwithfontforge.com, where someone can um, go download or, or read it. And in theory, that's sort of a, a general purpose URL that other people, if they want to write about Cyrillic or translate it into another language, that will work fine. Um, to quickly talk about the, the lessons you learn in the book sprint process, when you're writing one book and it's going to be done, um, you have to relearn your own software real quickly. Um, you have to look at the point of view of the reader, which is not always the developer. Um, and that can change the way you look at documentation and your code. Um, let's see, what do I want to? I have more I could talk about the lessons. You, um, you learn that the user doesn't see your, your application the same way you do. They see their workflow. And it, you will find odd things that you didn't realize were a problem for users because you're having to describe things the way they're done and, and not the way that you, uh, you set them up. Um, I want to leave time for questions, so I want to jump to the end. Uh, I guess the, the last thing to think about is that um, it is a physical book. It's a printed thing, and there's something different about that um, because at some point it goes to the printer and it's finished, and you can't keep altering it. And that there's a that realization will hit you at some point in the writing process. It might be at the very last minute, but um, it's not like a wiki where you can set up a big table of contents and write a great first chapter and then get busy and never finish it. And there are too many uh, open source projects that, that face that problem where it's easy to get in a distributed fashion and never finish something. But sprinting um, all together in one place forces you to finish it. So I would encourage your project to take a look at that through Floss Manuals or elsewhere.